to be on Earth at what I believe is like the Renaissance. The ability to sort of create our own destiny. The Renaissance podcast. Bro, and like I tell people all this all the time. I'm like, I'm 33, you know, but I feel like I live like four lives already. Yeah. Like I literally feel like I live four lives because like one, like, uh, like my growing, like, high school, that kind of life, middle school, you know, my childhood. And then after that, I went in straight to like, uh, uh, working at a company, you know, I kind of, I wanted to be an artist, you know, I wanted to be an artist, but it was during the recession. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of my friends were graduating from college with art degrees and they were like working at Starbucks because there was no jobs. No so job then I was like, well, yeah. why would I keep doing, keep doing this if there's no jobs at the end? And wherever I was working, they were like, bro, we like what you do. Like whatever the owner of that company was like, whatever you're going to make as a teacher, he's like, I'll pay you more. He's mm -hmm. like, just stay here. So then I stayed, I, I lived in the corporate world for like 10 years and I had a suit on like no tattoos, just like meetings all the time. I feel like that's like, I, like I was playing golf on the weekends. Like it was like a whole different life. I was living you're in South, the South Lake and Keller. Straight, yeah. Straight corporate life. Yeah. Corporate life, you know, and then. I went in the military and I feel like that's even like a different life that I live too, because it's just so different from so like, different, yeah. from like the, from, you know, civilians and just regular life. And then I became an artist and like, I feel like it, everybody from my previous lives, like just like, I don't know it's anybody. It's a process transition. Yeah. Like you, I you left everybody. meeting new people in that, that new change of scenery. It, yeah. Did. Like, it's not like Juan became an artist. It's literally like I died and became a different person and just be made new friends, made new people and that kind of stuff. And right. it's like, I live, I feel like I lived a lot, but what I feel like it's like at this point on life, you know, like I didn't think I was going to be single cause I was married. I was married for like 12 years. Oh man. Uh, yeah. But my ex-wife took out with some dude when oh, I was dang. in the military. Like when I came back from the military, she was like, you know, uh, but it's like, by now, I feel like uh, a lot of chicks are like, they're like damaged. Yeah. By now, they're they're damaged or crazy. One of those. Bro. Yeah, or like I, we talked about this and or, uh, with, with my friends is like, damn, like it's crazy, like it's uh, it's hard trusting people now, so guys or girls, vice versa, like either one. I like, feel like chicks are worse, bro. Oh. I, I feel like chicks are worse because the thing is like Asian. I feel like dudes, I feel like dudes like uh, dudes are simple. Yeah. Dudes are very simple. Yeah. Th we're simple, bro. Yeah. We know what we want. It's just like, okay, like, you know, it's like someone we always say you have to be physically attracted to. I'm not going to say beautiful because beautiful is different in every eye, yeah. but you have to see them beautiful, right? Yeah, that's true. Peace of mind. That's it. It's literally like that simple. Like guys don't really like, you know, a guy's not like, oh, I need a girl that makes a hundred thousand a year. Guys don't care how much money you make. Yep. We don't care what kind of car you have. We don't, it's just, it's that simple, but females is a lot more complicated. It's like. We want a man who's manly, but not too manly. Yeah. You know, we want to do what we want to do, but we want to be told not to do it. Yeah. Like it's, it's and, crazy. And then if they, and the, the worst part about it is that they're high, they, they're, eat, they're like way better at hiding stuff too. They're yeah. Like we're, like, we're like simple and then we can get caught. Like, if, if yeah, we, bro. We I, I once dated this one chick, bro, that like, I noticed that shit. Like she was like, uh, she would like, I don't know, bro. Like it was weird. Like, like she would like, um, she was like really, like really good at hiding that stuff. Like she would, uh, something like, uh, like she had no tag, like, you know, like my people tag me on stuff on, on Instagram. Yeah. And I, if you look at my social media, like I, I probably have like 500 tags, you know, and I don't even look through them, you know, but like she was yeah. like one of those people that would remove every tag. Like, oh, for you know, it's like after a while, delete comments, like, archives like it's it was crazy like it was crazy you know it's crazy i had a friend that told me that it's like when when you're meeting new people because i've been single for like two two three years now and and he told me he's like you really want to see how a girl looks like go to her text like that's where like because people don't care about what she looks like in, her, in their picture they care about what what they look like in their picture you know so i always go to their tagged pictures and that's how you know if she's catfishing you or how she looks or well and it's also a red flag that if they don't have no tags yeah that, that's it's also a red yeah, flag like why do you not want people to tag you yeah you know what i mean and it's, it's also crazy too because like like you'll you'll ask a chick out on a date right and then they'll be like oh i got a boyfriend and i'm like well I've been following you on social media for a year and I've never seen that dude. I know. You know, and you in in your bio it doesn't say you're in a relationship. Like 
chicks will be in a relationship and it's like it's okay if you don't want to attack the guy but at least put you in a relationship yeah you know what i mean like put you in a relationship otherwise yeah. what that tells me is that you're talking to other people and you're sp you're uh sparing their feelings i mean yeah. it's it's not like they all think that they like are getting away with something but it's like they all do it so it's like we all we know like yep. we ain't dumb yeah. <laughs> for real man all right remember let's get it started then this is Renaissance Podcast, your boy C's. My first solo podcast today. We got both my co-hosts now able to be here. You know, they got dad duties to do. Uh, but it's okay, man. We got to keep the show going, as we all know. Uh, yeah. But we got a special guest today, man. I've been trying to get to you for for, for a minute, you know, but his schedules don't align. But, hey, you man, know. I know how it is, man. But you know when I mean? it's time, it's time, you know, you're here finally, bro. How you been, man? How, how, is, how was traffic today? Man, traffic is crazy. I feel like uh, the DFW is growing and, like, the streets are not growing. Oh, you yeah, know what right. I mean? And, like, we're going to end up like California. Hell but the yeah, thing, right. the difference is that uh, California actually has, like, public transportation. We don't have that, like, a lot, like, over here, so. That is true, man. A lot of people are moving, and then also the construction is not helping it. Like, they are making, they are doing construction to open up bigger highways, more more routes and stuff. But it's taking forever to get those finished, so. Yeah. Man, like, I think getting, well, used to it take me, like, what, like, 25 minutes to get to the studio from my house? It takes me like an hour and i don't really live that far from here and i'm like man it's it's just getting worse and worse by 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 the time yeah that's but true. but talk to us about you man where were you born and raised in fort worth or uh no nah, man actually you know um i was born in mexico man mexico I yeah i was born in mexico i was born in uh monterrey nuevo leon monterrey, in mexico nice. you know uh i came here when i was really young like we moved to el paso um, like, I don't even remember. That's how young I was. Um, I don't even <laughs> remember. Uh, but then my mom's mom got sick and we had to go back to Mexico cause she, she was going to take care of her. Yeah. And then my mom, my grandma died. Oh. Um, uh, but she, I was young. Like, I don't really remember my grandma very much. And then we, after that, we came to Houston and I lived in Houston to like third grade. Oh, yeah. And then I came to Fort Worth after that. And I've been here since then you know other than if the times that i lived in the military away but i've been here since then my grandfather actually my grandfather died here because when my grandfather was like 14 years old he came to fort worth, fort worth and he worked here he worked here like at building like uh like the railroads oh no uh so when he retired he, back in the day back yeah, yeah yeah he was like like it was a it was a long time ago and he loved the city so when he retired he came here to lived his last days and then he died here yeah. so then like he told all his kids like hey y'all should come to fort worth it's open here so then everybody came here so now like most of my dad's family is here so i came before fort worth was even like getting as big as it is now right um yeah yeah i mean i remember like uh i still remember when like uh a lot of the suburbs weren't even connected yeah like you would have to drive through like cows to get to like if you're gonna go from like let's say watara to keller yeah. You would drive like five minutes, nothing but cows and stuff. Now it's all connected. Yeah. Now it's like a. It used to be like little cities, and now it's like one big city. Yeah, no, that's crazy. Cause um, I used to go to Fort Worth too as well a lot. Well, I grew up in DFW area too, so mm -hmm. so to me going to Fort Worth was was usual, especially because I would always help my dad when I was little, do like he was in construction, so helped doing some projects or stuff in Fort Worth. Man, it used to be all rural. Now. I go and it's all like city, especially in downtown. Downtown is is growing big, especially more buildings and stuff. Like also Dallas too, buildings like it's crazy because like my dad came, because he lives in Mexico. He came to Dallas recently. He was like, like he can't even see the American Airlines no more. Like he knew when he was in Dallas because of the American Airlines Center. Oh yeah. Like now you can't even see it. Like yeah, it's, you can't it's even covered see it. up. And it's yeah. like I was like, yeah, but that's how much it's grown. Yeah. Like, it's getting crazy. Or oh, like, but. Well, the reason I, I I know you, bro, is because of uh, my boy Alex Alex Rincon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he mentioned me ab ab about you, um, and he was like, well, "You should bring him in the podcast. He's a dope dude and stuff." I was like, and, and he actually had recently, he actually recently came out on one of his music videos, right? Yeah. So there's a crazy story about like how I met him. You know, I was just scrolling through like Instagram, yeah. and then there was this guy who I guess makes videos for him um i don't it's know. like jay yeah i mean I, oh I'm, yeah yeah I'm, i met him i met him already. i'm terrible at na uh, names i'm sorry bro um but like he i guess he followed i painted this mural of the dallas cowboys in grand prairie yeah and then he followed me after that and then he followed me for a while and then like he had posted a video of this dude boxing and he had this like 
uh music video uh this song and i didn't even realize it was the same dude i just liked the song so then he had tagged him yeah. so then i follow his um i follow his um uh instagram page, instagram page and I, I noticed he didn't really have that many followers so i was like oh he must be like a new uh rapper or something you know yeah. i think when i follow him he had like 150 followers or something like that but then i kept sharing that song you know, and I kept using it on all like my videos because I really liked it, you know. And then uh, I did that for like six months, seven months. And then he then like I think he messaged me from a different account. And I was like, oh, you the same guy. I was yeah. like, you box? And he's like, yeah, I'm <laughs> I do. And I was like, I didn't even know you box. And he's like, yeah, man, I, I box, but I do music on the side. And then like uh, I kind of connected with him that way. And I was like, man, your music is dope. Like I actually like like I listen to your music. You know, because there's a lot of times where people be like, oh, listen to my friend. And they don't even listen to that music, man. Yeah. They're, you know, they're just they're being nice and it's cool. But like, I actually listen to his music. Like, I have it on repeat sometimes. That's crazy. So you followed him on the on the, on his artist page. Right. And then and then you didn't even know he was a whole boxer. Like, I didn't even know that. he was a whole boxer. Yeah, because he actually makes it well that like the both pages aren't mixed so i can see how you followed that page and didn't even know he had a like yeah because like, most life. people will be like follow me on my private page on their bio or their my art page or something like that but he didn't and i mean i i liked his music and then later on i had asked him i was like what's up with the music video for that song man and then he was like man let, let's make it and i was like oh, i bet and then i got to be in it it was dope and it's one of those things that you know it just kind of came together that way you're a big football fan? Um, you know, I like the Cowboys. Uh, I wouldn't say that, like... Uh, You're like a diehard? I don't get emotionally attached to it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, okay. You know, if the Cowboys yeah. lose, I'm like, man, that sucks, you know, and I'll, I'll talk some crap on social media. Um, but then, like, it does like it doesn't... I don't get into depression mode or, like... There's some people who are, like... They're, like, really into yeah, football. Yeah, really into it. Yeah. yeah. But, but talk to about your daily life, man, because, like, I know that... I saw you recently saw, like, the... Uh, Kelly Clarkson interview and you said that like you pretty much became a full-time you or you mentioned to me earlier too that you became a full-time artist so like how is that lifestyle like is it like you have no schedule or like bro I'm more yeah, certain, oh, man is it like I've always wondered like is, is it like you have a certain schedule or you wake up in the morning you you, you already have something scheduled to draw or like, you know to paint? my life is so chaotic you know it's so chaotic um it's I think it's all good, you know, because, you know, you could look you could look at anything negative and you can look at everything positive. It's just yep. how you look at it. You know, you, I could say more money, more problems. And it's not necessarily like more money. It's just like you're doing more stuff. You're going to attract more problems. But in a way, like I rather like, you know, sometimes it's lonely at the top, yeah. but it was lonely at the bottom, too. So yeah. if I'm going to be lonely, I'd rather be where I'm at than at the bottom, you know, but it's um. And not that I'm at the top of where I want to be, but, you know, just things changed, things gotten better, you know, some things, you know, there's always, life's always a balance, you know, it's kind of like you can't have everything, you know, if you're always at work, you're going to miss out on some stuff, you know, mm -hmm. if you're, it's just, it's, it's all a balance, but, um, you know, for the most part, I, um, I kind of go based on what I have to do, you know, and I, I do a lot of different stuff. Like I do murals, but I also do painting. So mm -hmm. sometimes I'll be in the studio doing painting. Sometimes I'm outside uh, during the holidays. It kind of slows down a little bit, you know, because there's not that many like during the holidays. I usually that's where I get the most orders for like oil paintings yeah. because people want to give them for Gift, Christmas yeah, and gifts, stuff yeah. like that. So uh, usually around this time, I transition from painting outside to like painting inside the studio. And then mm -hmm. after like, january or something like that then i go from painting outside most of the time and plus it gets cold man i don't know how you would paint it with the cold right man now. that mirror i was telling you that i painted the dallas cowboys uh i it was like 18 it was like 19 degrees when i and, and i painted it oh dang yeah like i had like but you know like I, i'm kind of used to the cold or the heat the heat and the, just from being in the military and i know how to dress properly to the weather so yeah. like i have gear for most weather so it's just it sucks but that's the part that a lot of people don't see you know it's kind of like we were talking about alex you know you could look at somebody but you don't see them like you don't see them training every day you just yeah. see the highlights yeah. so you know you can look at the mural and you're like oh you know and Finish be like front. you know why did he charge so much to do that but you don't see like the person outside at 20 degree weather 
yeah. you know, painting in the cold, changing, having to change hands because your fingers are getting numb or like painting outside 115 degree weather and like having to like, you know, pretty much throw water in your head every like 30 minutes so you don't pass out. Like that's a part that a lot of people don't see. They just see like the highlights. How long does it take for for you to do a mural like like that or like a big big one like the one that you did for the the Dallas Cowboys one? Um, it just depends, man. It depends on a lot of stuff. Usually, from I would say from two days to like five days, oh, shoot. something yeah. like that. Um, sometimes a day. It just depends. Um, it's 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 it's, it's spray paint. is a little bit more. Um, like spray paint, I usually charge per size because it's more like. It kind of takes about the same time, you know, an oil painting, it could be different because, you know, if you're doing an oil painting that is like a foot by a foot, uh, depending on the photo, it could take you a day or it could take you a month to do it. It just depends on the amount of detail that is in yeah. it. But for spray paint, it's a lot more like predictable. So I, uh, for the most part, usually it, uh, it takes me about a day to a week per mural or something like that. Okay. No. Yeah. Cause, uh, I was going to say the, the, the mural painting seems complicated, especially, I don't know, like you, you mentioned like changing hands. So you're, you're able to like, I don't know how, what's the word for it, but I forgot how, the word for it, but you're able to do it with both hands, like draw with both hands. Yeah, I actually, uh, I don't know if you were, I don't know if you're born right hand or left hand. I don't know how that works, but well, I was I, like, I'm right handed, but like anything I do with my left, bro, it's, 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 it's trash. Well, I was like, born, I was born left handed. Oh, okay. uh, and then my parents forced me to be right with the right hand because you know they're weird mexican stuff um but so i i i, I can paint with my right hand and left hand oh that's crazy man yeah i didn't know that well my little brother's was left-handed too and uh, or left-footed sorry and he writes with his right right hand but also with his left hand he can write as well too like so i think he's left-handed too but he just like automatically like just started learning with his right hand since he was young my mom probably just made him like yeah anything he was writing with his right so I'm pretty sure that's that's how it is too but yeah i wouldn't anything with my left bro it's it's trash like i can't do anything with my left like it, I, i'm not able to do that that's why i was like damn that's crazy you can switch hands like that yeah but, i mean i but that's i mean i i don't know if everybody's like that i don't know i mean I, i've met a few artists that are like that for me like you know obviously I, I use my right hand a lot more you know it's probably like 70 30 you know, but I there's been times where I've gotten tired, so I've I've started to train my left hand to get better at it. So right now I'm like a probably like a sixty forty. I'm still a little bit better with my right hand, but I've been training it because also like I don't want to put too much wear and tear in my right hand, especially like your phone. Yeah. You know, it's like you you know like there's a lot of stuff that it's like cigarettes when they came out. You know, um, there's a lot of stuff they didn't know until like thirty years later. Yeah. And, you know, and we're one of those first generations that like got introduced to the big iPhones. And yeah. like we don't know, like 20 years from now, if people are going to be like having like hand problems because of all the texting and stuff. Yeah. Well, isn't there a thing where like I think you get some so much radiation, you're not supposed to have your phone like uh, on like by your face for a long time, periods of long time because of radiation. I mean, people don't listen to that. Like, it's just like... I didn't even know that, man. Yeah. I, I think I've slept with the phone in my face. Like, yeah, no, nah, for real, me too. I'm sometimes, like, watching videos and stuff, and then, like, I wake up, like, in the middle of the night. And it's, like, and in like my face, yeah. In my face, the video's still playing, or it's over, and it's still just on. Yeah, it's happened to me a lot of times. But, yeah, I think that I've, I've read a article about that, but I didn't even pay interest in it. It's like, man, you're telling me to get off my phone? Hell no, I can't do that. But, but now, yeah, man... Um, I was gonna ask you too. I mean, where like, what's some of your inspiration like of art? Like, do you have any inf influence like artists that influence you too? Like, because you said you lived like multiple lives even before you became an artist, right? You you started off with the uh, like in the well, not started off, but you went into the military. What age? How old were you when you? So man, you know, I, like I said, I was working in corporate America. Was uh, that young? You started corporate like young. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I mean, I started working at this company, but, you know, I didn't really move to, like, some sort of, like, supervisor position, you know, until probably, like, I was, like, 24, 24 25, okay. so, you know, but I, like, I bought, I bought my first house when I was, like, 21. Yeah. I bought my first house when I was 21. I was already, like, I've always been, like, an old soul, like, you know, like, I, I, I was a different person, like, I was a different person, because it's, it's crazy. I did a lot when I was younger. Like I bought my second house when I was like 24. Okay. I bought my first second house when I was 24, and I was like, 
gonna build it. I was gonna have a like a modern house built. You know, I had like this whole plan of what I was gonna do and start this business and and um man one time uh we were having like a uh goodbye party for this guy that retired from that company. Yeah. And then they had me like uh draw something for him and they're like, Man, we know that you used to draw back in the day. Can you do this? And I hadn't drawn anything in like five years, six years, man. Like I completely like gave up on art. Like I hadn't done anything. And I did it. And I remember how how much I enjoyed doing it. And I was like, this is cool, you know. And then we had this little party for him. We gave it to him. And then I came back to my office. I remember I had this feeling that I was like, man, that's going to be me one day. Yeah. Like, I'm going to retire from this place. And, like, what did I do with my life? Like, what, what am I doing here? Like, you know, it's like I feel like I've done nothing that matters. Like, I was given this great gift of art. I remember I used to be good at it and like I did nothing, you know, like I was actually I was not even in social media then. Like I mm -hmm. created my social media like four years ago. Like I was off the grid, just working home, working home. And um, at that time, my daughter was born. She just turned five and it just made me think, see life differently. You know, when you have kids, because you think about like uh, you think about. Uh, what they're gonna think of you the legacy you're the legacy you. you know and i wanted my daughter to be like i can do whatever i want so i knew that one day she was gonna ask me she's gonna be like what did you want to do and i would be like well i wanted to be an artist one day but i but i gave up on my idea because i was scared i was gonna fail but you should do it you know yeah, and, and it's you, you can't do yeah. that you have to lead by example mm -hmm. so i would rather like i had that uh, i remember back then i was married and I came home and I told my ex-wife, I was like, I'm going to become an artist. Yeah. And then she's like, okay. <laughs> and then I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to become an artist. I don't know how. I don't know how. And I remember like I made an Instagram account. I like, I, I still have the first post that I made on my Instagram account. I've archived a lot of stuff, but the first post is still there. And it was like, hi, my name is Juan. You know, I'm a full-time blah, 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 blah. But I, my dream is to become an artist. And it was like, f that was four years ago, you know? And, um, you know, uh figure i always knew that i it always made me feel good to like serve like do things for other people like i knew that my life has something to do with in, the, in service of others yeah so for some reason someone talked to me about joining the military and i've had a lot of mentors in my life that have been in the military like my art teacher mr daniels but she told me stop calling Mr. Daniels. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, Mr. Daniels. <laughs> I don't know. It's you, just you used to it's that, weird bro, to call it, yeah, yeah, like it's weird to call him Daniel. Like Mr. Daniel. Um and uh my, one of my good friends, Brett, from that job I used to work, they were in the military. And I was like, maybe I need to join the military, you know, uh, and do something like I don't know, like it's just I felt like I needed to get out of that job. Like, you know, it was just too many negative like that company, when I started working there, it was a small company, but just like everything else, like when you, it gets big, there's too many politics. There's too many people like, uh, like, uh, you know, plotting. And it's like, I've never been good at that. You know, like yeah. for me, I was always like, my work speaks for itself. I don't have to go kiss ass to move up, you know? Yeah. And apparently you do because, you and know, in corporate life you do for sure. Yeah. Because all the people that were not good at their job, they were sucking ass. They were getting promoted and the people that were like the company was on their back they were like getting overlooked and i was like i need to get out of here you know so i joined the military and um they you know they told me they're like you know you you can't just join the military like we need you here and i was like hey you know if you um i was like you know you have to save my job and they're like and they're like um you know, if you think you can join the military, the owner told me straight up, he's like, if you think you can join the military, you know, you, you need to go find a job somewhere else. Um, and uh, when I came back, I worked there for a few months and I could tell they were trying to get rid of me. You know, they were like, you were late for like three minutes, even though like I worked there for like 12 years and then yeah. written up. They like fire half my staff and they're like, we still need you to do all the work. And just like uh, during COVID, I was the only supervisor that they forced to stay there. Everybody else got to go home. Yeah. And then they were just making my life miserable, you know, and eventually they fired me and they're like, we'll give you 15,000 if you say that we didn't fire you because you joined the military and signed Damn. this paper. And so uh, legally they didn't, I guess. Uh, but quite frankly, like if that even goes to court, I'm cool with that. 
Like mm-hmm. I feel like I'll take that to court if it, we need to. to court. Yeah, and Americans. they they fired me, man. They gave me like fifteen thousand. I had just come back from the military. Was behind on bills because the military doesn't pay you a lot. I was making a lot more back then. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it was out of desperation, honestly. Like I was like, if I'm gonna become an artist, it's gonna happen now. You know, but then that's when COVID was happening and all the art shows were shutting down and all the art festivals were shutting down. So I really couldn't do much with art, especially the fact that I didn't really have a lot of connections. I didn't know that. Like, I literally just made my my social media. I didn't really know anybody. And then it's just yeah. COVID. So nobody was meeting anybody. So then I started painting murals and I really didn't even want to paint murals, to be honest with you, man. Like, I really didn't want to paint murals. I didn't want to paint murals. I wanted to do oil paintings. But then I started painting murals because I was like, I need to figure something out. And I was probably down to like my last $200, bro. Like not even kidding, bro. Like I was down to like, I'm pretty sure I was like negative in my account. Like I was like, and I my, my friend Brett had called me and he was like, hey man, like I'm working at this other place. Cause he left there. Cause he, yeah. you know, he, he knew that they were bull crap and he left and he was like, hey, I'll give you a job. You can work for me if you want. And I was like, man, I got like one more week. Like, let me try to do this art thing. And if it don't work out, like I'll come work for you. Yeah. And that's when I saw that they had found um, Vanessa Guillen dead. Uh, the soldier that was killed in Fort Hood. Yeah. You know, that was they recently released a documentary on, on, on Netflix. Netflix. I still haven't seen it. Yeah. And and what happened was that um, some idea just came to my mind. I was like, I'm going to use the paint that I have left, a few money I have left. I'm going to paint. I'm gonna paint a mural for her, you know? And then I did. And the next day, I kid you not, like I probably gained like 6,000 fo- followers on Instagram. And like, mm-hmm. I got like four or 5,000 friend requests on Facebook. And like, I did nothing but interviews the next day. And like, then I had nothing but job offers. And I've been doing this full time since then. Full time, damn, that's crazy, man. And then uh, honestly, when, when you listen to stories, I watch a lot of podcasts of people and, Usually when it's like that last desperation or you seem like everything, you lost everything and you got nothing else. I feel like that's the when you're like that, f- that hard work finally pays off. And you're like I said, like your your friend was like, come work for me. You're like, just give me another week, you know, and that same week all this happened. It's like it's always like that that moment. I don't know if you felt it, but it's like, you know what? Or at least when you got those six thousand followers, it's like, you know what? This was meant to be, you know? Yeah. And like it's my calling, you know, it's um. I felt like I was at the place where I needed to be doing what I needed to do. Yeah. You know, it's like it's one of those rare moments in your life that you look at it like I feel like every person has like maybe like two, three moments in their life that they can go back and think like this completely changed the course of my life, you know, completely like. And that was one of those for me, like that moment of. I'm going to be on that. That was like the fifth mural that I painted. Yeah. And I had no teacher. You know what I mean? It's like I had no teacher. No one was teaching me how to do it. It was like the fifth mural that I painted. And I had like 300 people watching me. And I was nervous, man. I was nervous. I was scared. I was scared to fail. I know a lot of people, you know, a lot of people, people love to support people, but people love more to see people fail. You know, and I just knew that failure was not an option. Like, I was like, look, you ain't never painted this before, but you're going to have to do it. And I just have to do it. And I did it. And then the rest is just history, man. It, It sort of worked out, you know, and it just, it's weird that, like, all the stuff that, I've been able to do with that because I never thought that that was even possible. Yeah. Like I never thought that was even possible. It's, it's been a blessing. Especially transitioning, bro. Cause like, I, like, we, like telling me like going from corporate life to the military and then becoming a freelance painter. It's like, it's crazy transitions. And you mentioned uh, like how people love to see you like fail. It's because they're been comfortable with their life and they didn't fulfill their dreams. It's like, they want to see other people, be like okay it wasn't me it was, it's how the world is you know like n- nobody has to reach their dreams which you g- clearly are you know and and transitioning from like the corporate life to military it's like it's a scary step to do uh, especially because corporate life it's like you said it's really toxic but it, the money's always good you know uh, corporate life is always going to be good 
But at the end of the day, you're not leaving any legacy behind. Bro. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't... Honestly, I learned so much, man. I learned so much from a lot of people. You know, even the owner of that company. Oh, for sure, yeah. You know, like... um. I don't feel like I I I I've learned a lot from him, man. I learned a lot from my one of my. There's a guy there, like when I first started working there, man. He's from Louisiana, and like I didn't even understand what the hell he was saying. But <laughs> his, <laughs> his accent, yeah, yeah, yeah his accent, yeah. Cole. Um, you know, and he's a lot older. Well, he's not a lot older. He was like seven years older than me, like okay. you know, eight years older than me. But I, man, I just like he became a really good friend of mine. He taught me a lot, man, about life. Uh, you know, he taught me a lot about life. Uh, and he, you know, I started working under him and every time he moved up, he would promote me. And every time he moved up out, you know, and I will always try to make him, you know, do a good job, make sure that, you know, for him. And, and, um, um, it just, uh, I, I, you know, it's like, there's things that happen in life, even if they're bad at the end, like there's always something to learn from them. And I learned a lot from a lot of those people. Like, I feel like when I started working there, I had this mentality of like uh, the neighborhood, you know, the neighborhood. And it's like I just wanted to like buy a truck and like, I don't know, watch the Sunday game and uh, and the weekends. And it's like when I started working there and I started talking to all these people that had traveled the world, that have gone to Japan, they had gone to Alaska, like I saw the world differently it made me look at the world differently. Like it made me feel like I could do this. Like I could start my own business. Like I could do it. I can do this, you know? And, uh, there's so many people, like I said, like one of the, one of the ones that I learned the most from, like I said, it was my friend Cole and, and Brett. They taught me a lot, man. And, and I feel like if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be doing this because I probably would have like, you know, just, chosen a different path in life or something you know but being working there i guess gave me the life skills that i needed to do what i'm doing now same thing with the military same thing. you know and what what branch did you uh join uh, army army yeah that's me yeah um what like how how, how long were you in the, in, in the army for you um well I, i'm still technically in the army uh oh, you're this but um you know the army is just Man, like, a lot of people are losing interest on the army because, um, like, uh, we don't really have a c clear picture of why are we even fighting. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of people, like, like the last retreat that we did, you know, it's like we left a lot of people behind. They had our back. And, like, there's a lot of, like, discouragement in the military now. Like, uh, there's a lot of people leaving the military. Like, I actually saw it on the news that, like, the military has to have a certain size to maintain, like, security in the country. And uh, they have to, like, enroll, like, 45,000 people every year or something like that. Yeah. Uh, because, like, 45,000 people leave the military every year. So, like, they have to keep it the same size. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, this year they, like, enroll, like, 15,000. They couldn't get more people. So, and we can't drop that. So, they were, like, we don't know what we're going to do. We don't know if we're going to force people to stay in or, like, I, I I don't know, man. That's crazy, and especially I mean, I uh, honestly I feel like it's it's because there's no reason for us to be fighting no no other country, you know, and like us uh, like it's especially risking their lives, you know. Um, I, I have a lot of military friends that are that are in the military, and I know most of them have gone out already, or like I mean, th th technically they're still. I don't know how I don't know how it works, but like you saying you're still on it, it's like because you're still enlisted. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know. Um, it just wasn't that great of experience for me, you know, like, um, it just, uh, it was just a bad time for me in my life, man. Like, I feel like I got to that point where I was just like, man, like, I understand why people lose their mind in the military, you know, uh, you're, you're out there, you know, it's kind of like you're, you have like, you literally see for like four hours, man, like five hours. Mm -hmm. And then you're just like running back and forth doing stuff like, you know, and you, you, you need to have a clear mind, you know. So when you have a family, you know, it makes it a lot harder. Yeah. Because you're, you know, you think that people, wait, like, you, you imagine, it's, you imagine, like, people are going to wait on you, man. And you get back and you realize that, like. um They've lived their lives. They yeah, like, nobody waited on you, man. Yeah. Nobody waited on you. Nobody really cared. People moved on. And, you know, uh, 
if you're gonna join the, I always tell people like if you're gonna join the military like do it as a single person like don't do it with a family you know or a wife and if you're gonna join with a wife like make sure they're solid because like um the military has like the highest like divorce rate yeah it, yeah it's not easy i mean especially because there's been a meme going around like there's always the memes going around that's like uh, when you meet a met uh, when you meet a military guy that like they want to marry you by like the third date <laughs> they already yeah <laughs> they already met you yeah i always laugh at those bro because like, it's true you know, i had friends like like girlfriends or, like uh that like had told me it was like man i've dated a military guy and by like third third date that already i was barely talking to him he already wanted to marry me i was like it's true yeah. and they all, and and we all get a camaro or a challenger <laughs> a challenger <laughs> i i a mustang I have a challenger. <laughs> you got a challenger, God damn it. You hitting, you hitting the profile, right? Yeah, like, it's like, you know, stereotypes sometimes are, uh, you know, they're they're not funny, but some sometimes they're true. <laughs> or Jeeves, too. Right? Jeeves, yeah, Jeeves, like, it's Jeeves. like, you know, you can't get mad. It's like, oh, you taco eating motherfucker. And it's like, I, 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 do, I, mean, I, right. I do eat, I do <laughs> yeah, eat tacos. I do tacos <laughs> like, you can't. Can't complain. Can't deny, man. Have you ever, I've, I've always wanted to ask an artist, bro, because, like, you're my first artist that I've interviewed, um, have you ever tried psychedelics and done art? Man, that's a really good question you're asking right now because uh, I was just talking to somebody about doing that because I've never done it. And I was like, you know, I feel like uh, every, everybody's ta- like, I have a lot of friends and, you know, I know a lot of artists and they're telling me like, bro, like, you know, it's like you, it's going to unlock like another level. E- e- level, you know, and just like it's they're like, you need to do it. But you know it's it's hard to try something like that for the first time without like you gotta you gotta make sure first of all like you should make sure you have someone there that's done it before yeah so in case like you're tripping or something they like you know you have to be in a calm place you have to be in a good peace of mind and you know i uh because of work because stuff happens like the opportunity has never presented itself but i you know i i don't i feel like i feel like everyone should do it and something like you're not closing should. your doors to. Yeah, I feel like everyone should do it. I feel like people get really like, like for instance, like I come from a very religious uh, family, and I've seen ignorance to a level where people are like, "Don't go to the hospital," like pray to God. Oh yeah. And I love God. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I love Jesus, and I would never deny that. But it's like, bro, Jesus is giving you the hospital. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but then like for some things like mental health, they're like, no, just pray. But then when they have the appendicitis, they go to the hospital and I'm like, bro, how can you be a hypocrite? Like if you're going to if you're going to really be like, nah, just pray about everything, then just stay home and like die of appendicitis. Like make it make sense. Yeah. Like, you know, because uh, then there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of people that like don't believe in like mental health and that kind of stuff. Like they're just like, oh, that's just made up. Yeah. Uh, so I, I feel like um, I feel like that's something that uh, there's like a stereotype with that you know same thing with weed you know yeah. people you know like weed is not as bad as alcohol yeah you know what i mean like alcohol is one of those things where like if you get addicted to it like you can die mm-hmm. like if you go through withdrawals like i personally seen family members that have um uh they couldn't even do the withdrawal like they, they almost died yeah. you know and i've had uncles that died for like drinking too much so it's like but it's legal and weed is not yeah no, and honestly, the only reason I say it was psychedelics is because, well, I've tried them before uh, multiple times. And, like, after you do, uh, like, either shrooms or anything like that, yeah. like, your vision is so clear. And like, that, like, a- anything you want to create, I feel like, especially as an artist, you would want to create, like, like anything you want to see, it's, like, clear, clear, you know, in your mind and you draw it, you know. And I feel like that w- that helps as, as somebody f- who draws, like, um, that would help a lot well because when i did I'm, I'm not drawing but like anything that i was like thinking about it was just so clear to clear like my my thoughts i don't know how to explain it but like your thoughts are so like clear on like what you're thinking what i was told is that they they told me that like you might not be able to concentrate enough to create art not but, at the moment yeah not at the moment but, but it's but gonna like open after, up yeah yeah, yeah after. like you're gonna see things differently afterwards yeah. that yeah. or get ideas from it that would help you create art and I think that, man, I, like, I was watching this podcast, like, the other day, and they were talking about this, like, psychedelic drug that um, this dude did, and he was, like, he lived a life for, like, four years. That's what he said. Yeah. So like, I said, it's Alvia? 
Yeah. He, yeah. He, he, I was watching, uh, he lived like a whole life for like four years. Yeah. And he was like, he like snapped out of it. He was like high for like, I guess like yeah. four hours. Yeah. And he snapped out of it. And he thought that he was like in a dream that he was yeah. like, he's like, they're like, nah, bro, like, those people don't exist. That don't exist. Your and dream. Wh- what's crazy is that you're not supposed to, you can't come up with people's faces, like, especially in dreams. Like, you can't see a face that you haven't seen before. So I wonder how that works. Like if you're living a life, like did you just randomly pick people from the life that you knew to, yeah. you know, it's, it's, I feel like we should, the government should look more into that. Now for sure. Cause I think, um, I don't know if you're talking about the same person, but, um, Ari Shafir, he's a comedian. He did it on a, on a podcast, on a live podcast. He, he took, uh, uh, the psychedelic and he literally was out for like 10 minutes. But when he came back, he he said he had lived for like three months in a different whole world, and, yeah. and and it's crazy. I'm like, bro, that's crazy to think. Like I haven't taken, and that psychedelic, but like shrooms is something obviously a lot more weaker than that. Did you ever like, watch uh um, uh, Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings? No, I haven't. Oh I haven't. my god, man. I haven't. I I've, I've been wanting to see it because of the new show. Yeah, but I haven't seen the movies because they're so long, and it's like I have to find a perfect time to watch them. Yeah, well, th- there's a part in there that I was I was always like, man, Gandalf some shrooms, because uh, <laughs> there's th- there's a part where like he fights this monster and they fall, and then they are like, what happened to you? Because they don't see him for like, like they don't see him until the next movie, yeah. and he just comes out, he comes back, and he's like, he used to be like Gandalf the Gray, and he comes back as Gandalf the White, and he has like a new robe, and he's like new beard just looks a lot different and they're like what happened to you and they're like I, he's he's pretty much like he said that he fell through like eternity and fought this beast for like a thousand years and then beat it and then came back and <laughs> I was, then he was on <laughs> shrooms the whole time i was like <laughs> i bet that dude was on shrooms the whole time he's just he was just high i mean there's oh. a there's a theory that Christ, christianity i mean i grew up uh, in a christian home but there's a theory of like how christianity was born from uh um, from like shrooms, from, from shrooms, yeah, from shrooms, from people being shroomed out. Cause back in the day, obviously they didn't have uh, um, like all the they took psychedelics. So obviously sh- mushrooms, like they grow from it's yeah. natural, everything's natural. So like whenever it would grow from the ground, they think it was edible and they would eat it. And then that's like why the Bible was written, or like why it's part of the Bible was written of like those visions they had of God. It was more of them being on shroom, shroomed out. And I was like, bro, that's not. I mean, it's not a crazy thing to think about that it could be true, you know? It's like... I feel like, you know, like, personally, me, I, I'm one of those people that I can talk about religion and it doesn't offend me, yeah. you know? Like, I can talk about people... And I, that's that's some of the things that I've learned from um, corporate America. Yeah. Because corporate America, they're savages, bro. And, like, you got to be able to go to a meeting and, like, pretty much insult people in a professional way yeah. and, like, and keep your cool, yeah. you know? And... and, and Cause once you get them mad, they lose, you know. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I've learned a lot from that. So I can, you know, I I can, I can, uh, I can talk about it. But I I think there's more to it than just like I like I I watched this video uh, one time that they were talking about like the Ark of the Covenant. Mm-hmm. You know, that's where they had the uh, the the um, the stone uh, tablets where it has like the commandments. Mm-hmm. That's where they kept them and. The description that they had of it, e- they even described the size of it. Yeah. Like they had found like an opening that hold something exactly that size inside one of the pyramids. And Moses was raised by Egyptians. Yeah. Uh, which actually I was also I like literally just found out like most of Egyptians were black. Yeah. Um, and I was like, whoa, that blew my mind. I was like, yeah, I thought they were like, always, they were are like our because in all the summer. movies, yeah. you know, and it's like, but now, nah, like, they, they, you know, they're it's in Africa, you know, and, and a, a lot of it, like, if you look at like, if you look at there's, I don't even want to get into that because that's going to turn into something else. But, um, I started, you know, I just I recently, like, in my free time now that I'm painting, I'll be watching videos while I'm painting, and, uh, they, they were saying that, like, uh, some of the pyramids, some of the stuff there, it created electricity. Like yeah. the, there's evidence that the Egyptians knew about electricity and they had a light bulb. Like they even describe a light bulb. Uh, yeah. And and then there was like, there was like some some emperor for some c- uh, country. I think it was like Babylon or something like that that had gone to e- Egypt, and he wrote saying that they had a light bulb. Yeah. 
yeah. and like described it and stuff and uh they that that arc of the covenant like it creates electricity like they this is a university that recreated a copy of it because it was made out of gold yeah and like gold is like a super con uh, conductor so like uh you know when they were saying like whoever touched the the Ark of the Covenant, like they would just, uh, like they would, they would die, and yeah. they die because they were elect electrocuted to death. Yeah. You know, so th there's there's some of that where it's like science, you know, and I I feel like. I feel like God would use science, like why wouldn't he? You know, he invented it. He I just feel like tools to 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 pretty much. Uh, it's just like evolution, evolution, you know. For a yeah. while, for I still remember when churches were saying the dinosaurs were made up. You know, I feel like now it's more like accepted, like, yeah, yeah, these were real. But when I was young, the official statement was that dinosaurs were, were made up, that they yeah. didn't exist because they weren't in the Bible, you know. But I feel like because people were like they were against evolution. But I'm like, how can you believe in a God, but then be like, he's not smart enough to invent evolution? Plus, the Bible was written by other people. And I feel like at that time, they don't have the, the tools to research the history that they had uh, before them you know anything that had happened before them now we have the tools to like either the dig and and then find bones and stuff of like uh yeah. and stuff and back then they didn't have that that type of that type of equipment to do it and so like anything that's written by the bible is written by men you know so it's yeah like it's like they're gonna write what they lived through that moment you know and and, and that's why i'm saying that's why it doesn't sound crazy that like maybe the not because i still believe there's a higher being but I feel like every religion has a higher being, you know, and I feel like the higher being is, is true. But I feel like every religion is based on what their culture was grew up on, you know, and and, and what the Bible or the I forgot what it, what the the Bible, the Bible of the the Muslims are. But uh, but yeah, like they, they all grew up with like it was just cultural things. But everybody does have a higher being and it's the same one. We just have different interpretation of it you know yeah i mean like i said i believe in in what i believe but i feel like it, w all the religions in the world right i feel like all the religions in the world like n i don't think that there's like multiple gods so like we yeah. we all come from the same god yeah. in a way like i'm not saying who's right or wrong i'm just saying that sometimes we gotta remember that we still come from the same God. Yeah. We still come from the same place. If you believe in that, you know, if you, you know, there's people that, you know, no, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I want to yeah, That's a, kind of the same thing I was saying. Like, it's like, there is a higher being and I feel like that higher being for everybody is the same one. It's just that everybody's cultural. Yeah. Uh, cultures made us believe in this. It's something different. Well, we have the you know, if, if I, you know, I, I've noticed too, that sometimes when you look at like scary videos, when you look at scary videos in different cultures, it's portrayed differently like a lot differently you okay, know I and, and that, so like even that like you know like you look at art it's portrayed differently it's mm -hmm. the same thing but it's like they're all telling the same story but they're telling it in the way that they can yeah you know so yeah I, that has a lot to and you can i mean i don't want to get too too much into it because i don't really i mean it's like i don't have the bible with me to you know people be like yeah, nit it, nitpicking yeah. what i'm saying but yeah i i think that uh there's there's still a lot that we don't understand in the universe maybe some of it we're not meant to understand in a yeah. way like in in a way to me like it doesn't matter some things you know like some people get really caught up on the afterlife and yeah. it's like for me it's like i think about it i worry about it but at the same time if you're too worried about tomorrow you're not you're missing today yeah you know you gotta enjoy today the little moments you know i've i've been i've been in rooms with friends and didn't know that that was the last time we're all gonna be together yeah. You know, I've been I spend time with people, you know, you know, laying next to them. And I didn't know that, that was the last time we were going to be together. You know, so I try to m like more now. I try to live on today, you know, mm -hmm. and just enjoy all the little moments. No, yeah, man, I, it's just crazy you say about that, because like, yeah, I, don't, I, don't re I never really think about that. Uh, but like I always say that it's like damn it's crazy like you never really know if this is going to be the last time you're going to be hanging out with those type of those people or like whoever you're hanging out with you know like living this joyful moment that you're living and you never know if this might be the last time yeah, yeah. like I get a lot of people that always tell me like I won't say a lot of people because then that makes me sound like a hoe but I'm not it's friends and family you know or just people I date but people have told me like 
like you hug like you're not gonna see me again <laughs> you know uh when you give a hug like you hug me like you're not gonna see me again and i tend to live by that like you know if if i'm around you if you're my bro wh whoever you are if you if you're close to me like i'll make sure i like i i think about that i'm like you know it's like i try not to leave anything unsaid that i want to say or you know or because you never know man like you never know like you know i've had friends that it's like you see them and the next thing you know bro like oh so and so had a car wreck they're yeah. gone you know life is that short yeah man that's crazy man because yeah that's how I'm, i had both both my one of my well i only have like four close friends and like two of them have been gone from like car accident motorcycle yeah. accident and well the other one was uh, uh I had like a accident at work but it's like it's crazy man like you you never really think about that at that moment yeah uh, yeah li right. life is short man life is short people think that you we always think we have more time than what we have yeah you know we always think we have more time than what we have but we don't man that's one of the things that actually like motivates me you were asking me like earlier what motivates me to get up and do what i do that's part of it man is me understanding that i have a certain amount of time you know as anybody who's a creator you know like you're creating videos you know somebody's making music somebody's over here painting whatever it is like in a way like we all have our different reasons why we do it but we want to be remembered through our craft yeah. you know so you have a little unlimited amount of time to create as much work as you can you know and because after that that's it yeah why do you think um our art is more appreciated when like the artist is gone because uh, like especially like all these paintings or like old artists or like Rita Kahlo and all of them like everybody that's gone like it goes so crazy up at higher prices, but like it's never appreciated in at that time. That's a good question, man. Um, I think that so it's there's different reasons, but one of them that comes to my mind, I think, is that sometimes people create art for people for the future. You know, like Van Gogh was a lot like that. Van Gogh, like he started his art career like super late. Um, he was a art dealer. His brother Theo uh was an art dealer he sold art he sold paintings and van uh vincent he worked for his brother and then that didn't work out and he became a preacher okay, like van, yeah. van gogh was a preacher and he was like he went around preaching to people all the time and then he decided to become an artist and his brother paid him to somewhere to stay so he could just be a full-time artist and he, they had a really close relationship they actually wrote each other like almost every day and those letters, they put them together and they made a book called Dear Theo. And you can see the relationship between them. And you realize that Van Gogh wasn't crazy. He wasn't crazy. He wasn't depressed. He wasn't like the people they make him out to be, you know. I personally think that he shot himself because his brother had an illness and his brother died. Like his brother died like two months or three months after he died. And his brother told him like, hey, I'm going to die. And then like later on, he shot himself. That's why I think he shot himself, honestly. Uh, I guess we would never know. But when van gogh was alive he only painted for like three four years man and he painted like a bunch of paintings and he sold only one painting while he was alive and it was to a family friend and he died like i don't know man i don't know if he died not knowing how great he was i mean i'm sure he knew how great he was otherwise he wouldn't keep painting of what he painted but he was painting artwork for for us yeah we didn't appreciate him back then people did not like his work back then you know, so I feel like a lot of times people don't know what's art because you have art critics that don't create art who talk about what's art. That's the that's like that's, a, you know, I've seen that even today. Like people are just like, I'm like, bro, how do you there's a lot of local here art critics and they don't even know how to create art. I'm like, how are you talking about art if you don't even know how to create art? I'm sure yeah. some of them are going to get upset yeah, mad. Yeah, mad but it's true i mean it's kind of I, I get your point because it's kind of like the same thing as like let's say basketball analysts that like never played the game of basketball and they're over here criticizing bro the basketball like player. don't like i've like, painted so many uh sports murals that i'll be getting people like on the comments they're like he's you know it's some dude that weighs like 400 pounds and he's <laughs> like he just needs to run one second faster i'm like bro like like it's just art. Well, first you're creating art, but uh, like at the end, it's like, well, why, why are you saying your opinion on this? Is like, yeah, like you're not qualified to have an opinion. Uh, but I think some of it is that I think that people, some artists like create work that is great, 
but the people in their time don't have the mind to appreciate it. And I think that the second thing is exclusivity. Like, I feel like when there's less of something, it's worth more. Yeah. So that's just like basic, you know, it's like when you're, when, when there's less of it, it's worth more. So that's another part of it. And some of it is just like, it's just luck, man. You know, like there's a lot of artists, you know, and there's a lot of great artists. And I've, I've come across people's art pages and they're like, they have like 300 followers. And I'm like, holy crap. Like this guy is like one of the best that I've seen. Yeah. And he has, you know, sometimes it's like, I feel like I got lucky. You know, I got lucky with that mural that they caught the news. Like maybe I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people just get breaks. That's true. That's true. Cause uh, I mean, like you said, it like the the Vanessa uh, mural m- made you n- go viral and then go get get a lot of a lot of notice from the news and stuff from from people following you. And you know, like I, I do see why. Like we and we talk about this also, like in the different podcasts that we're talking about, like mm-hmm. music wise. Like we've seen like a lot of artists come through here, where like it's like damn, this guy is like ten times better than like some viral artist that is going like crazy. Yeah. But it's like, it was like, how is this guy has like only three hundred followers, but this guy has uh, a million followers, but like his music is like way better. It's, it's the industry. It's who you know, man. Yeah, it's who you know. It's who you know. It's who you know. That's literally it's who you know. It's who you know. And like Van Gogh, the thing about Van Gogh is that. When he died, he left all his paintings to his brother. And, you know, because Van Gogh, technically he died of that gunshot he gave himself. So it was considered suicide. So the Catholic Church did not want to give him a burial in the cemetery. So they buried him outside of the cemetery. And I believe it's in Amsterdam. And his brother, well, after he died, he buried himself next to his brother. So they're buried next to each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, and th- they had a really beautiful relationship, both of them. Um and um he left he, when his brother died he left all the paintings to his wife i believe her what was her name um i forgot her name but she like had kids which his brother named his kid vincent after his brother yeah. so she had a vincent van gogh too and uh she needed money so she took all these paintings to whoever could all the art galleries that she could take them to until like one art gallery saw them and they were like oh, these are dope, and then showed them, and then everybody was, like, follow, like, turkeys, because they, you know, it's the same people that said his work wasn't good, but because this person who is somebody says, no, they're good, they're like, oh, they're good? Oh, oh, they're great. Hey, we always liked them, and then, you know, he became the icon that he is. I think I saw a story one time, like, it just popped up in my story, like, uh, like, scrolling through it, not story, but, like, the reels, you know? Yeah. So where like it had like I I don't know if it was Van Gogh painting, but it was like it had like a like a, like a that 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 I forgot what it's called, but like it just made you like like your eyes dizzy, mm-hmm. and then like look look at Van Gogh's I don't know if it was his painting, but it was like look at his picture like his painting afterwards, and like the sky was moving. Oh, and I, was, like, I, I know don't that know if you know. Which I one have that about. painting tattooed right here. Oh, for us? Yeah, yeah, that one. Like it was like I I stared like stare at that dot for like more than thirty seconds, and then look at his painting afterwards. And then I saw it, and then that shit was just moving. I was like, bro, what the fuck? That tripped me out. I was like, that's crazy. Yeah, his sister-in-law was named Joanna. Joanna? I think it's like Joanna Van Gogh. Joanna Van Gogh. But yeah, that that's uh, th- so it is Van Gogh, right? That That is his painting, the one yeah. I'm talking about. Oh, okay, I got you. Starry Night, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, that one. That yeah. one. Yeah, I was like, bro, that's crazy. It's like, that's, that's the thing that you say. It's like, maybe that's not what it, me- it meant for me, but that's so ahead of its time. It's like... Is yeah, like, you know that location where he painted that painting? Like, if you go to... I believe it's, like, in France. I think that painting he painted in France uh, uh, or Amsterdam. One of those. But, um, like, that location, they have it, like... Uh, it's, like, an official, like, uh, landmark. Oh, really? So, if you go there, you can stand there, like, and you can see, the, like, wh- exactly where he painted that. Yeah, like, a lot of the places... The, the painting, too, where it's, like, a cafe that he painted outside, like, there's a landmark. Like, this is exactly the point he was standing where he was painting it. And uh, there, there's a lot of those where he where he painted f- really famous paintings. Like they still have the locations where he did it. Do you think? Uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm not really known in like the history of art, but like, do you think he did any psychedelics doing like doing art? Is man, there any recording of that? And I, n- I never thought about it, man. I never thought about it. Because like looking at that painting of how it does, like when you take psychedelics, 
that's what it does to you like you like the yeah, art like it becomes, moves. becomes alive you know yeah and, like i've seen art where like i've gone i've done shrooms where and i went to an art art museum and like all the paintings were moving around me so it's like it's crazy when i when i did that through my story and it was moving it's like it was like a little snippet of like me being on shrooms you know yeah and it's like it's crazy to think about that now that we're talking about it it's like maybe he did that drawing or painting um being on shrooms you know so it's like you never really know there's artists like basic like i mean there's like there's artists like yeah it's like um unfortunately sometimes for the good sometimes for the bad but drugs are very much a thing in the art world oh for sure you know like um yeah do you think that has to be not a problem but like uh like a uh, like something mental problem in order to be a great artist or like do not have to but like some of the great artists have always had like those mental issues i mean we look at like not art just art but like let's say connie and connie's music is great but what makes him great in music also makes him great in, in politics or his like being a normal person you know because he has that aggressive yeah, man. Or like um, that mentality that's i can't speak for everybody but for me yes i'm not a normal person um i am not a normal person and i think that my the way i am changed a lot when i became an artist and i think that like um a lot of people have told me like to change some of those things but i'm like that's so the reason why i'm you? like that is yeah. why i'm good at what i do yeah but those things make me not good at normal civilian life but they make me good at being an artist and i feel like you know like as a, as an artist like i feel like i'm a very emotional person you know like my work is connected my feelings are connected to my work mm -hmm. so if i'm doing a painting and it's not going well like i'm you can see it like it affects me emotionally like it affects me like i can't sleep well like you know i feel like i love harder than most people but like i feel like i hate more than most than most people like i feel like, i feel like i feel emotions more than people like i feel like yeah i feel like uh i feel like you can't be a normal person and be an artist it just doesn't work that way mm -hmm. um in my opinion i mean i'm sure there's always an exception for everything but most of the people that i know that they're about that life they're not normal people yeah. they're weird people and and you know i like that i like the weirdness but most people there yeah they're not normal that's crazy yeah that's, that's something i've always thought about because obviously like i said you're my first artist that i've, I've interviewed you know but like i've interviewed a lot of music artists and like usually the ones that have those like issues or have that darkness behind them is usually the ones that create the great the great music you know and i feel like that translates to art as well yeah yeah i mean i think that um yeah i mean art is one of those things that it's like it's weird i was thinking about that the other day uh i was i was hanging out with a friend of mine who's also an artist um and um she says she is uh she's in uh she sings you know and i was thinking i was like man like you know we both make a living out of really nothing you know because like there's people that build houses like you can say okay like there's goods that you're creating you know it's like but i'm literally just throwing paint at a wall yeah. and you're just saying stuff out of your mouth and people you know and it's like it's one of those things that we as humans find value in find it. value in it you know it's like it's like uh from the beginning it's a very human like if you look at the caves that they found like uh there's some caves that they found in france that had been like i don't know how many thousands of years like locked up and there's like drawings all over the cave like art has always been yeah, uh, a part of us it, yeah. you know songs you know i if you look at a, a lot of the like um history there's always like musicians there's always like art it's just i wonder who and i feel like it's also because when you talk about legacy it leaves the history of those people uh in in it especially in like those those paint those that cave that you said was found is like that history of what they like what they were back in the day you know it, it's it portrays it books also is something big that's like left behind but it's also stories that is like something from like that would happen back in the day you know stories that that 
that show what it was like back in the day, you know, especially mm -hmm. art. And I feel like art is the best way because people seeing something, a visual of something, it's a lot easier than reading it, you know. And so I feel like that's why art, for sure, it's 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 something valuable uh, that we keep a, a, as people, you know. Yeah, I mean, if, uh, if you think about it, too, you know, it's, it's universal. Mm -hmm. um, There's no language between it. Right? Yeah, like, you know, language itself, like, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we create that, depending on the culture, they don't understand mm -hmm. or they don't get it, you know. But like art, like if you paint a if you paint a mural of flowers, you don't need to translate it. Like even people that, even people that that are deaf, they live they yeah, li or they live in the forest or something, you know, they have no communication with the outside world. Could look at it and be like, oh, yeah. hey, that's some flowers. They look nice, you know. Yeah. Like it's universal. It's one of the uh, art is universal. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Um, I know you have an appointment, too. So uh, what was it, the appointment? You have a drawing or mural to do, or what is it that you have? Oh, man, I got to I gotta go do, I got to do, uh, I'm actually doing another podcast. Oh, a uh, podcast? Yeah, oh, but nice. it's a, uh, it's like a nine. Um, They wanted to talk to me about, uh, like, some of the cowboy murals that I painted. Oh, for real? Because in that podcast, like. Um, it's a sports podcast? Yeah, um, they, they have, like, two, uh, like, I think two of the former Dallas Cowboy players are going to be there. Oh, who, who yeah, who I, I forgot, man. You don't know that. Hopefully they don't see this and they're like, man, screw that guy. Yeah, <laughs> nah, man. Well, we, we support all the podcasts in Dallas, man. Like, it was not a lot. So, you know, it's uh, it's growing, though. It's growing like uh, especially because like, well, my, uh, most of our podcasts are Hispanics, you know, and it's like, yeah, uh, like we're trying to bring the Hispanic community, especially any like you, like you're Hispanic. Uh, that's is doing something out here, you know, like uh, like Alex, we brought him uh, onto the podcast to another Hispanic that's doing something. Yeah, that's from, another, from you Dallas. know, I believe in supporting everybody, man. But, you know, um, I know how it is. And if anybody disagrees, they probably don't know how it is and they're not even qualified to have an opinion. But um, what I've noticed in the industry is that, man, it's kind of like prison, bro. It's like y people look out for their own, yep. you know. And it's sad in good ways, and it's you know it's like depending how you look at it, you know. But um, somebody once told me that they're like, no one's gonna support you more than your own people. Yeah. You know, and you know, like I said, people can look at that anyway. But I mean, that's kind of how it is, you know. That's kind of how it is. Like I grew when I grew up in middle school and high, uh, yeah, middle school. It was a very diverse middle school, you know, uh, and uh, it was like muslims white asians like we we're all friends you know i don't even think we thought about like race yeah it, we, 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 were, we were all friends you know and i remember when i got to high school my the town that i grew up in didn't have a high school so i had to go to like the high school uh the town next uh next to it and i went to Halton high school and i remember when i got there like people were like why, why are you hanging out with them i'm like they're, they're my friends and they're like, no, man, like, we got to, like, stick to our own stick here. Stick to your own, yeah. And it was weird for me. It was, like, I remember that's the first time that I was, like, why? And then so they're like, nah, this is how it is. And, and and in a way, like, in a way, that's how it is in life. And I, like I said, I don't, I don't agree with it. I'm not saying that it's good or bad. Or I'm not, it's just something that I've noticed, you yeah. know. And, and I, maybe we just, maybe we're just more comfortable with people that look like us. Maybe it's a culture thing. I think mm -hmm. it's more of a culture thing. It is. It is for sure. Uh, but I've always said it, you know, like, uh, I think what what a lot of people are appreciative, especially in the white culture, is like if somebody is going up, they, they really support it. And I feel like Hispanics have that tendency sometimes of being a little bit of, like, haters, you know? Uh, you know, it, uh, I've noticed that, but, like, um, it's always in your own city. Yeah. You know, it's always in your own city and um but i don't know if you noticed it but like sometimes like i feel like strangers give you more love than sometimes the people that i've, you're close I've to literally them. said that like um uh, i think like a year ago i was in fox news like they did this little i don't know like 15 second clip before the cowboys game and they put mm -hmm. it like they put it up before the cowboys game so i was pretty excited because i was like man i'm gonna be on the tv before the cowboys game you know uh, and I remember I was like, uh, I went to El Chingon on 7th Street and I was watching the game there. And like, I was like, I'm, I was watching myself on TV and it's a weird feeling. Uh, I think now it's like, I'm more used to it, but it was a weird feeling back then. 
and I was so proud, man. Uh, it was 15, it was like 10 seconds, 15 seconds, but it was like, I was really proud of it, you know, because I was like, I'm making this happen, yeah. you know, but I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm making it happen. And, uh, I had like maybe four or 500 strangers, like tell me how proud they were of me. Yeah. And I had no one from my family call me and tell me anything. Like I had no one that I care about call me or tell me anything. It was all strangers. They're like, man, we're freaking proud of you. Even today, like I live, like every day I get people, I don't even know them, bro. And they send me like long messages. Like I've been following you for like two, three years now. Like I'm so proud of you. Like I don't even know these people, man. Yep. You know what I mean? And it's like, um, so, so yeah, I know that it's true. Yeah. And that's how we got it. I mean, we started this podcast during the pandemic as well. So like uh, us getting support from like, our friends, we kind of saw it as, like, you don't really get that support. And then out of nowhere, like, of the followers that we built up, the little followers that we built up, it's all just strangers, you know? Like, it's people don't really, we don't even know. And they just automatically follow us through reels because they, they like what we say or, like, uh, they fuck with us because we're, we're Hispanic and they see us. They're like, oh, if they can do it, you know, I could do it too or I see myself in them, you know? It's like we ask the same questions that I would have asked in, uh, interviewing that guy, you know? So it's, uh, it's, it's crazy to see how like everybody is like that you know like uh, you get more love from the strangers but again it's 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 all love at the end of the day man like yeah um i don't take it personal no more man that's why i don't try i try not to you know i had a friend that was like bro you gotta stop concentrating on the negative stuff and you know i'm glad that i had good advice from people and you know sometimes it does get to me I try and I, I some, it's something I don't talk about that much, but at the same time, I didn't know what I didn't know. And when I started working, when I started this career, I thought it was as simple as just painting well, just paint well and you're good. I, what, I didn't know that there was a lot more to this, man. There was yeah. like, there was like a learning curve of like, uh, like you're pretty much transitioning to a whole different life. You know, it's not just like, what you do but it's like the people you're with how you do it and and i didn't have anybody man i didn't have a lot like i lost everybody i lost everybody when i started doing this and i, I literally was alone you and think I'm, the and business I, side is the hardest part yeah like i have nobody that told me like okay man like this is what you need to do and like don't share too much personal stuff like don't trust everybody not everybody's your friend like that kind of stuff like i was very naive you know so i uh I feel like when people want, that's the biggest, that that's the biggest thing that I didn't know when I got into this, that it's more, it's like appearances. It's like going to events. It's like talking to people. It's like networking. It's yeah. like, you know, there's a lot more to it than just pain and stuff. It's how you sell it. It's, it's like I said, who, you know, right. Yeah. So it's like, you could be a great artist, but if you don't know anybody, what is that going to do to you? You know, I, I painted, there's been times where like I've ha didn't even paint something that great, but I just knew a lot of good people and like I did well. <laughs> and then I seen people that were painting stuff that was even better than mine, but they weren't doing that well at networking and they didn't do nothing. So yeah, there's a uh, definitely uh, anytime I take an opportunity to talk to somebody new who is in, you know, doing this, I try to like mentor them because I know what it's like to be out there in the ocean trying to swim and you don't even know where you're going. Yep. Yep. I, I mean, honestly, bro, I'm happy that, like, uh, it's not be by myself. I have also two co-hosts. Obviously, you haven't met them, like my editor and my co-host. Uh, they just both became dads, too. So, like, that's why it's kind of hard for them to, like, make it to every podcast, too, because it's like that being, I don't know, you remember, like, being the first time, first time dad, you know, it's it's always, like, that 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 those first six seven months of you having the baby uh, how hard it was but but yeah man like having that support group is it's it's kind of i feel like it's easier for me because then like it's like three months you know uh, but like i feel like it's a lot harder for you that you're like doing this alone you know it's like you got to know who do you trust uh with them i grew uh, i didn't grow up with them but i did meet them i've been knowing them for almost seven eight years now so it's like no nah, man I, I got some i got i've made new friends like I said, I lost everybody, but like I said, you can look at everything negative and you can look at everything positive positive. And yeah. that opened up 
uh, for me to meet new people. And I got to meet like some solid people that have my back. My friend Dwayne, shout out to my friend Dwayne. He's a tattoo artist and he gives me a lot of advice um, about the game. You know, like uh, he's one of the people that was like, bro, you got to stop sharing everything on social media. Like you got like, you know, so like now on social media, I'll be posting funny stuff, bro. Like, but it's a tool. Like I know it's a tool. Yeah. And I need to get reactions out of people so that the algorithm pushes my stuff up. So I'll be, you know, it's like a lot of people when they meet me, it's like they think I'm that person, but I'm not. Like, just know that's just a tool. Mm. It's a tool. I'm using it. You know, I'm yeah. using it. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a lot more reserved and conservative, like, in real life than I am on social media. You know, my friend Roman, too, who actually, like, free, free my homie Roman. Uh, you know, he's uh, currently incarcerated, but, you know, he's uh, I talk to him on the phone a lot, and he gives me a lot of good advice, even though... Th- this dude is like six years old, younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> He's hey, like, but some younger people have lived crazy lives. Yeah, lived. yeah, he, yeah, he, um, he gives me really good advice. Um, and uh, my friend Muriel too, she gives me good advice. And um, you know, um, just a bunch of people that I have. You know, uh, my friend Victoria, uh, just people I didn't really know. Like three years ago you know so it's like you i i had seen this thing on social media that was like you don't know all the people there like you're gonna care about like you haven't met all the people you're gonna care about in your life yet you know so it's like you gotta be open for that and it's good man i have good friends i feel like i know a little bit more about what i'm doing and like i said right now it's kind of slow because of the holidays but as soon as like January comes back up, my man, I'm ready to, I'm ready to go hard yeah. and, and do some big stuff. So where can the people find you uh, that they don't know to the camera, like uh, oh boy, um, social media? So they can find me on, um, I recently deleted Twitter, man. Twitter? Yeah, I recently deleted Twitter. Is it Twitter. why? Because Elon Musk going in there or you just didn't want to, that toxic? Uh, it's just too toxic, man. Yeah. It was way too toxic and, um, you know, it is way too toxic. I feel like. I feel like, especially if you're like in a relationship or you're dating somebody, right? Yeah. A lot of people on so on on Twitter, they like uh, the people that post a lot, they'll like blindly just post what is in their mind. Yeah. And I feel like you're not meant to, like you're not meant to know everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like I just and it's just it's too toxic. It's just like honestly, like it didn't really do. Like I don't know, maybe I wasn't using it right, but. Uh, like, I didn't really, like, I would share something and it would get, like, three likes, you know, as compared to, like, Instagram that is, like, 800 likes or, you know, whatever. Like, yeah. it's just, it's Twitter. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. How, but I, d- I deleted Twitter. But they can find me on Instagram on uh, Velasquez uh, underscore art underscore. And that's spelled, like, V like Victor. E-L-A-Z like Zebra. Q-U-E-Z like Zebra underscore art underscore. Yeah, for sure. We'll pop the tags and everything under there. So, yeah, uh, they'll, they'll find you, man. But anyways, man, it was a pressure having you here. You yeah, know, man, I uh, appreciate it. You're going to have a podcast with two Dallas Cowboys, so those Cowboys fans are going to look forward to that, too. We'll promote yeah. It, but, uh, but, yeah, man, nice to nice to see you. And for sure, I hope you have you again, you know, uh, anytime you want to come. Speak your mind on something. Just hit me up, and you can I'd, be here, bro. I mean, I just have one question. Are those comfortable? Yeah, hell, yeah, they're comfortable, bro. I actually have those shoes. Um, I was gonna. Wa- I actually wear it with this fit, but I was like, man, I'm gonna wear my comfortable as you, uh, uh, your slides. Slides, bro. Yeah, uh, these are comfortable, bro. I've been meaning to buy some, but I've been wanting to like dip them and like buy the white ones and like dip them on something. Yeah, yeah. do the like the tie dye on yeah. them. Yeah, bro. I, I they're so comfortable that like I that has take them to the gym. Like I'm I'm at the gym working out with these shoes you, or like you still fuck with Kanye? Yeah, All right, I good. still fuck with Kanye, yeah. bro. Yeah, like. He's crazy, but like, there's the thing is, people gotta see what his message is behind all the craziness he's saying. Cause he's like all over, he's a guy that's like all over the place. But like, if you really focus on what he's saying, then you know what message he's bro, trying to give, I'm, bro. I mean, I and understand him to a point degree because my mind is everywhere, bro. Like, and I, I didn't realize how chaotic my mind is until I was like dating. Yeah. Because like, they would talk to me about something, and like, I would just like, 
like I was ha- I'm, I'm having five conversations in my head and they're just like, oh, you're not listening to me. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm listening to you. But it's like I that's when I realized how chaotic my mind was, you know, because women will let you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure they will let you know. <laughs> They'll let you know, like, you're not paying attention to me. But I'm like, I am paying attention to you. Like, I know everything you just said, but I also am having, like, three other conversations, and I'm thinking about, like, a project, and I'm, like, singing a song in my head at the same time. Like, th- yeah, it's, I don't know if it's an artist thing or maybe it's just me. No, it's people that have create great art. I mean, as yourself, you know, it's, like, they have that mind of, like, everything going through their head you know and like only great artists do that um or have that but but if you really pay attention to what they're saying you understand them that's why like i'm like i'm still a Kanye fan no matter what um yeah he can mess up you know because everybody can mess up uh, on bro what people saying. like but you it's don't like crucify somebody for it you know it's like bro like <sighs> unless he's actually committed murder you know that's that's something else but like if he's saying something and maybe he's He's messed. He's messed up of what he's saying, or like. But you can be rude to you. You could talk to a thousand fans, and like, be on a rush one time. You woke up one time, broke up with your girl, having a terrible day. Your car got impounded. I don't know, whatever. And then you, someone walks up to you the wrong time and asks for a photo or something, and you could be rude to them. And, and, and next thing you know, you're you're. You're you're just a rude person. Yeah, you're crucified. As a you're crucified as a rude person. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how that goes. Yeah, yeah, man, that's it sucks, but that's that's the life they have to live, you know. Uh, as an artist, somebody famous, it's that's that's the price you pay for that fame. And I mean, hopefully you don't you don't get to have to have that. You know? I nah, you know, like you're more reserved on you, like you say, you're more reserved on social media. So it's the it only helps, th- you know. The only thing for me though is like. I can't go on a date in full work, man. <laughs> Cause then the next day people will be like, "Man, so and so said they saw you over there and they took a photo of you." <laughs> I was like, "Dang." <laughs> yeah, like I notice it more. Like whenever, like whenever I go out uh, on Seventh Street, like I get a lot of people. They're like, "Oh, you're that guy that paints," like you know. And they'll be, "Can I take a photo with you? Can I take a photo? With you? Like, you're that guy." Like I get that a lot. But usually when I'm when I go out with somebody, they let me, like, they don't bother me. Like, they, le- they let me be. Especially, it's some t- same same with my daughter. Except a few times I've been out with my daughter, people come up to me. But a lot of times, they, they like, let me they leave me alone. But then, like, later on, they'll message me, and they'll be like, hey, I saw you on 7th Street, but you were with somebody. So, uh, so, um, so sometimes, like, if I want privacy, I'm like, I'll come to Dallas. Because, like, yeah, I, I know a few people in Dallas, but, like, there's a lot of people that don't know me in Dallas. Yeah. So, you know, like, I'm not, I'm not anywhere near uh comfortable calling myself known yeah you know but uh other than like in fort work you know but like outside of that like i'll be like if i want privacy like i'll go to dallas yeah well, i mean hopefully i mean uh, uh, most of our viewers are in dallas bro. well so actually i'm moving to dallas man oh for us what yeah. are you, you moving i'm not sure yet not I, ne- sure yet? I need to get out of fort work man my car's been broken into like six times oh for us yeah yeah man dallas is it's a tough uh, area to to find uh houses in um but I, i'm looking currently looking for some well i'm just gonna rent an apartment apartment oh, yeah, okay yeah. then yeah it's easier but there's a lot of good areas you know honestly th- around this area is pretty it's pretty nice like um when i would say downtown downtown is a lot more expensive but but there's a lot of areas like addison is a really good city to live in it is considered dallas but like Addison is close to like either go up north to like Frisco area or like it's like right in between downtown too as well. So it's like it's like the perfect spot to. Live I kind of want to rent like a like a one bedroom like or two bed like a two bedroom like like apartment in a skyscraper. Oh shoot! And like just like be super artsy, like just have a bed. Just and that, uh, like not not even a frame or anything. Just yeah, the just bed. the just the bed and like. I feel t- like that's a Cali way. Like I, every time I've seen like Cali YouTubers, that's how they live. Like they don't they don't even have frames. They just put a, a put a bed. Yeah, just a bed, a TV, and then like paintings everywhere. Yeah. Like, just live the art artist artist life. Yeah, that's crazy. Man, honestly, when when because this our our end goal is to have like our own warehouse, you know, um, not like rent out a, a place to have a studio. So I feel like our, our uncle, I'm, oh, I'm definitely going to hire you so you can do a mural uh, on, our, on our warehouse. Let me know, man. And we have a lot. I have a lot of ideas of like what I would want to be, have painted, you know, but we'll have to talk about it for sure later on. Yeah, man, for sure. 
Yeah, man. But anyways, man. Uh, so you said Velasquez underscore art underscore, right? Yeah. I got you. All right. No problem, man. So yeah, man. Anyways, I seen y'all guys. You know, like I said, first solo podcast. But you know, the boys will be back next episode. Hit the subscription button. Hit the notification button. And let us know what y'all thought about this episode, man. Let us know if y'all have any other questions. Peace.